On today's show, I am cooking up New Orleans style barbecue shrimp in a healthy broth with grilled cauliflower cakes and a mild tomato herb yogurt sauce. Rebecca Turner will give us some helpful tips about Gulf Coast seafood, and we take a shrimping tour on our Down on the Farm segment. Gulfport artist and a good friend of mine, Marty Wilson, joins me in the studio to make all this happen. Come on back. Welcome back to Fit to Eat. I'm your host, Rob Stinson. Today, my special guest is a good friend, a Gulfport artist, Marty Wilson. Marty has combined his love for sport fishing with his talent for painting. And I've got to tell you, man, your artwork is spectacular. You've done so many fine, different things, but I think it's your love of seafood that's dragging you in here today. Huh? Well, you know it is. Thank you for having me, by the way. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, you know, I know a lot of people out there may know of your artwork, but I don't think a lot of people know why you started with all the seafood and how that, you know, came to be. So tell us a little bit about kind of like you, go to your childhood, baby, let's hear all Well, that. I mean, you know, my mom taught art for like 18 years. My dad has thrown us in a boat fishing since we were like three, bought a fish camp in Biloxi, and then we ended up, I grew up on the back of a shrimp boat. So my love for the ocean and the Gulf of Mexico and the Mississippi sound and what came out of that was really the inspiration behind all my art these days. That's so, so cool, man. Well, listen, what we're gonna do today is a little untraditional seafood, right. okay? We're gonna do an actual barbecue New Orleans style shrimp, but healthy, because you know, as well as I do, Barbecue shrimp is what? Oil and butter, and when you think you got enough, more butter and more oil, right? I was always taught if two scoops of butter is good, three's better. That's, that was my <laughs> well, mama, right? Well, we're, working, so. we're working on a whole new path, so this is gonna <laughs> be, right, be eye-opening. Teach right. me. First, we're gonna start, we got a good hot pan here. And I'm putting, and I pour it out of this so it really limits. That's about a half of a teaspoon of oil. Mm -hmm. So very minimal. <clears throat> And then a spray of a zero fat spray away from the flame so we don't burn the studio down. And the first thing we're gonna throw in there is gonna be our garlic and our onion. And the onions will kind of sweat out some natural juice. A Little bit of pepper. And then we're gonna actually go ahead and toss the shrimp right in. And actually, I've got probably a little bit more there than I need, so we're gonna hold back on some of those. I think you should throw those in there. Yeah, isn't that cool? Well, you know what? The staff is probably hoping for some, but, you know, we'll give them what we have I left was, after I'm, we eat them, right? Right. All right, now, now some of the cool stuff. Smell that. Mm. That's fresh thyme. Mm. Okay, so we really try to focus in on fresh herbs. And in barbecue shrimp, you know, it's loaded with all different types of herbs. And I think what makes up for the fact you're going to see, there's no salt in here. Mm. Nothing, only the natural salt that the actual shrimp themselves would have. So we're gonna put that last bit of the pepper around on top of the shrimp. So as they're exuding the salt water from their bodies, it's That's right. flavoring your sauce. And, right? And that cool. right on. And you know, a lot of people don't realize that they naturally have it, so you don't really need to add it, I swear. Mm -hmm. You know, I know you probably think, well, you know, a little bit wouldn't hurt, but now we're gonna go in with just some fresh chopped parsley. And I mean, it just makes all the difference in the world to have it fresh. We're gonna save some of that for the end. And then a little bit of spice, a little hot sauce. Everybody's got their favorite. We won't mention any particular oh, okay. names, but you so know, we'll just get it in there. And now this is a low sodium Worcestershire style mm. sauce, okay? Not actually that product. This is actually a, uh, a really unique product because it has virtually no salt. Now, We've got all that in, so now it's kind of time to toss and have some fun. All right, and I tell you, the one thing on this is nobody's going to remember all the details on the recipe. So, Marty, what we try and get them to do, go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat or join the, web pa the uh, Facebook page where it's MPB fit to eat. And all of this, even ourselves, will be on video. So it's really kind of cool. 
All right, let's go through and put just a touch more of that parsley. I want to get a little color. Now, here's kind of the fun. This is actually a little bit of rice flour. Mm. And the reason we're doing that is this dish is gluten-free. So we're going to use it just to thicken the your, sauce. Your sauce. And I'm oh, only going to wow. put about a teaspoon in right now. I don't think we'll need any more. And you put it in before you add all the liquid so that it doesn't clump. Mm. Rice All right, flour. now we're going to toss it around. And you can see it's kind of getting dry, right? Everything is kind of cooked in. Shrimp are starting to turn pink nicely. And it's actually starting to almost look like barbecue mm -hmm. shrimp. Mm -hmm. All right, so now a little white wine. All right, and that white wine will deglaze the pan and get all that juice. And it gives it a chance to kind of really blend the flavors. Keep tossing it. Now the trick. I know, and you were like, what is that, Rob? This is a pure, unsalted vegetable stock. And I've got a little bit of extra. Now that the juice is in there, we're just going to throw in a couple little bay leaves. Let those kind of cook in. Mm, those aromas are all so, coming out. I, I know, isn't it great? And it's all natural yeah. herbs. Mm -hmm. You know, so now you're really looking at what actually appears to be kind of a traditional New Orleans style barbecue. <laughs> and look how pretty the shrimp are. You know, isn't that, isn't that amazing? Looks amazing. Yeah, mm. it really is neat. Now, we're going to go back in and add in, of course, you got to have lemon with barbecue shrimp. We don't need a whole lemon, just a half. We're going to squeeze that right in there. You know, my favorite thing, I think, with barbecue shrimp, though, has always been dunking bread in the barbecue sauce. You, you got to you know, you do it. You got to do Orleans, it, right? Some French in, bread. Right. In New Orleans, you might even have a fried seafood cake on the side. Mm -hmm. which, there's a restaurant there, Manali's, and I love it. It's just incredible. And man, they serve these little seafood cakes with mm -hmm. their barbecue shrimp, mm -hmm. and they were the originator. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to be. So today, we're going to go a different route. Uh -huh. We're going to take, and I know you, he's like, right. he, yeah, Marty <laughs> is not quite sure about this. We are going to make some cauliflower cakes. Uh -huh. And the sauce and everything will blend so well with them. And at this point, I'm going to turn the heat down on this and add a little bit more of our juice because you can see, look how that thickened up. Mm -hmm. That rice and then this uh, juice, flour yeah. really. Isn't that amazing? Thicken that up. Mm -hmm. It's got a perfect kind of consistency, just what you'd really wow. want. Isn't that something? Golly. All right, so listen, I've been doing all the talking about the food now. All right. I know that you've embarked on this unique painting style, and it's got to do with shrimp, and it's ancient in the Japanese world. Can you give kind of a brief description of that while I'm actually pureeing? I'm going to puree up this cauliflower. Well, you know, it's called giyataku. It's a Japanese fish printing technique that I certainly didn't invent. They invented it back in the early 1800s. But I do full color on canvas. But, you know, <clears throat> how that originated was all my fishing buddies were all bringing me their fish and having me do their fish presses. And it's kind of a fish mount alternative, if you want to call it. So it, it records the exact length and the girth of the fish. And then I paint on there what it weighed date it, and now they have a trophy that they can hang on the wall and it's a piece of fish art, you know, instead of That's the so deer cool. heads or the, the fish mounts that, you know, the wife don't let you have unless it's in the man cave, <laughs> you know, or the garage. <laughs> but now she, you if know, you're she, on good terms. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So That's now, you know, they get the fish art, it's in the house, everybody enjoys it, he gets his trophy, and, oh, you, and you get to cook it and eat it. Wow. Right, so, so you, you get yeah. it all. Right, you get right? it all. You I get love it all. That. I love that. <laughs> hey, yeah, I mean, invite me next time and I'll work on doing some of the food. Yeah. But uh, all right, we're going to heat the pan up over here on the other side now. And you can see what I did over here. I mean, look mm -hmm. how simple that was. Mm -hmm. All I did was literally puree all of that. And it's not really even pureed, it's chopped. Mm -hmm. So let's see if I can put that out front so they can kind of get a view of that. I'll get rid of the bottom. And everything that's going to go in this pan, we start the same way. No, the zero pan spray. Now, are you mixing a breadcrumb with your with Actually, your I'm going to show you. That's a good question. I'm going to okay. show you. The cauliflower actually pretty much becomes the bread. Wow. So now we got garlic, onion, celery, green bell pepper. And I mean, the colors on this start looking so good. Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, what a seafood cake is about, you know? Mm -hmm. All the different veggies that are mixed in there, typically with crab meat or shrimp. Mm -hmm. and breading, which mm -hmm. we're not going to do, all right? And a little bit of pepper. These are kind of mildly seasoned because you're going to see I'm making that neat Chiron sauce that's going to go on top, 
and it's going to have a lot of flavor. And then we come back over here. With your stock again. Huh? And all that cauliflower goes right mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. So now we've got actually enough, and we can toss this around and start cooking it. And again, the magic of a little bit of natural unsalted vegetable stock. So this is actually at a great point. What I want to do right now is talk about if you're not sure how to buy seafood, Rebecca Turner has some great tips that can help you go choose what you should look for when you're buying Gulf Coast seafood. If I asked you what a prawn was, would you be able to tell me? If you answered a large shrimp, you would be correct. If I stumped you, you're not alone. I just recently learned that fun fact too. Seafood, including shrimp, oysters, crab, and fin fish is a healthy choice for people of all ages. In fact, current advice from our leading health organizations recommends eating two seafood meals each week. Seafood is a nutrient-rich food that is a good source of protein, vitamins, and minerals. The best part is the omega-3 fatty acids found in seafood, which promote healthy brain and eye development in children, while reducing the risk of heart disease in adults. Mississippi's Gulf Coast makes it easy to enjoy and share fresh seafood with family and friends. Fresh shrimp are so versatile in quick cooking, you could call them the ocean's pasta. They can be prepared a dozens of healthy ways, from sauteed to boiled and served with dipping sauces or in salads. And my personal favorite is eating them over whole wheat pasta. And when I dine out, I always choose a shrimp cocktail as my appetizer for a heart healthy start to my meal. Now, whether you love them raw, sometimes fried, or even on the half shell, oysters can provide you with a host of health benefits, among them enough zinc to help boost that immune system. Raw oysters are a delicate art, and in my opinion, it takes the right cracker with the perfect cocktail sauce and just a peach of horseradish. Now, if you can't get past that slimy texture, then throw those bad boys on the grill and fall in love with char-grilled oysters. You may not know this, but many live by the guideline to eat raw oysters only in the months that's spelled using the letter R. This came from the days before we had refrigeration when oysters could quickly spoil. However, oysters are still best in the fall and winter, particularly if you're going to eat them raw. Including seafood as part of an overall balanced diet can provide many health benefits. Start benefiting today by incorporating Mississippi seafood into your family's weekly menu. It is truly fit to eat. All right, well, you know, one of the best things about living in Mississippi is our Gulf Coast seafood. I mean, we have such great stuff, and if your diet is really focusing on eating healthier, seafood is the way to go, huh? Oh, so, yeah. all right, we're doing that really good. Wait, let's see that right, again so people can actually see. See, all right, we actually got a cook on TV. I, I, think, I, that's, I think that's great. All right, <laughs> we've actually got this now to a perfect point where it's nice. We're going to put it into our mixing bowl, okay? And then, I don't need to get quite all of it, some of that last portion we're going to leave off. What we're going to do now is bring it over here, and this is where we try to make some of the magic, okay? Again, remember, we're doing gluten-free. This is some golden flaxseed instead of breadcrumbs, okay? Wow. And it's just very, very small amount. We're putting a tablespoon in there, okay, so we don't have too much. Just a little bit of binder, And then huh? the neat part is an actual egg white mm -hmm. to try and keep our calories down and our cholesterol down and almost all the yolk out. Mix that all together. Mm. We can get rid of most of that right now and do a little housekeeping. And then we're just going to kind of gently stir all that together. And where we're going to go with this will be to form some little cakes. And I tell you what, smell the aroma of that. Isn't that something? Wow, that's fresh. Isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. It really is. That, and that so, took five minutes. Yeah, it really doesn't that's... take long at all. And you can see the egg is going to start catching. And uh, what we're going to do is actually put this on the board where it'll cool. Okay. Spread it out a little bit. And then after our break, next break, what we'll do is come back and we'll have some nice cakes that we can actually throw together. And, uh, and have a little fun with this, because I think at this point, what we want to do 
is get our shrimp out of the heat. Don't want to overcook them, right? Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. of the main things I try to tell people when they're cooking seafood is, mm. man, you know, people overcook it. Yeah. And you and I both know. Oh, we, yeah. were, we were just talking yeah. about yeah. tuna and how tuna is incredible, not even cooked at all. Right, right. I mean, if you catch it on the boat, are you cooking it? Sometimes we're eating it on the boat. Right. No heat. No heat. No heat. Just For slice me, but... center tenderloin, just pull it out the tuna yeah. and eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that great? Slice of potato chip thin. Hey, would you grab me one of those slotted spoons right Just there? one of these yep. guys. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All Boy, right, that so, looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, aren't those great? And we'll have that sauce that we got coming out. So where's my Leidenheimer bread? Where <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is fit to eat now. Come on, Marty. We got to get you on the program. All right. And then we just take it simply once we get them all out that nice. Wow. And look at that sauce. Wow. And I mean, tell me, that doesn't take, look. Thank huh? you. Is that, is that yours? Thank you. <laughs> Here, you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we're going to set that over on the side. Because ultimately, mm. we really pretty much finished that. And I've got another pan that we're going to warm so that we can sear those beautiful little cauliflower cakes. And then when we come back, you know what I'm going to do? This is, this is, I know, I know, you, you're not going to even believe this one, but I'm going to take some yogurt, non-fat Greek yogurt, mix it together with some tarragon, some pepper, and spices, little tomato, and make a beautiful little Chiron sauce without mayonnaise. So, mm. all the recipes, now, and I know, you're not going to remember them all, mpbonline.org slash fit to eat, and I think this is kind of neat, but... You've talked about it, and I've talked about it, and we're going to talk more when we come back. If you're visiting the Gulf Coast and you're looking for something the whole family can enjoy, a shrimping tour is just the ticket. We tag along on one of these fun and informational tours on this week's Down on the Farm, and I tell you what, it's incredible, and you know these guys. Oh, yeah. Mike and Brandy, they're wonderful. Unbelievable, huh? And I, and I did their logo for him, so we, we, we we're going to have some fun. Tattered. Oh, yeah. All right. It's a great tour. My name's Captain Mike Moore, and I operate the Biloxi Shrimping Trip. The history of the Gulf Coast comes alive aboard this boat. Uh, when we have our passengers come aboard, uh, we take people shrimping, we show them the parts of the trawl, we show how the trawl actually works, we give a 20 minute drag, and during that 20 minute drag, we basically start explaining everything there is to do about the shrimping industry on the Gulf Coast. We shrimp at night here because shrimp move about a little bit at night. They come up out of that mud, so you catch more. The shrimping is still a major economic impact on the Gulf Coast, and it started as being a major impact, and it's just continued. I like to tell people that shrimp's been out there for a few million years. They're not going nowhere. I like the kids to actually touch, feel, and get to experience what's out there. Uh, I don't let them handle the nets or anything for liability purposes, but when we get the catch in, we like everybody to see the pick, pick and box. We take anything out that's dangerous, and then we start passing different species around and try to explain everything that's in the net. This is a male blue crab. I don't have any females this morning. The female has an orange with a dark red tip on her pincher. She has an oval back, and the male has that stem, that straight line down. We're uh, kind of like a watch me grow boat, you know. Uh, we, uh, bottom line, there's not a lot of difference between farming and fishing. Uh, it's all about mother nature. It's all about the weather. Uh, these guys uh, get regulated and, and manage their crops by not fishing them at certain times of the year. Uh, a lot of relations between the two. So, of course, yeah, we are an agriculture tourism business. This is called a silver eel, a ribbon fish, or a cutlass fish. They are actually in the mackerel family. They are edible. They got a lot of teeth, big eyes. They get about three and a half feet long. And we like them to catch king mackerel with. They're real shiny going through the water. We live in Biloxi, Mississippi. This is one of the most famous seafood areas in the world. And uh, first off, our locals need to know about this tour and, and what 
is it like for a commercial fisherman to go out there and drag his nets and see what he scoops up? And I uh, love taking today. We had uh, uh, kids on board, uh, a class that you know that was originally from here, from our area, and those kids getting a chance to find out about their history and their culture. Uh, it's a good feeling to take them out there and give them a taste of where they come from. And for other people from other area, um, history and culture is the new tourism. People, people want to find out, hey, where does this town come from? If they want to find out the roots of Biloxi, uh, shrimp is the roots. There's no doubt about it. Come on board and we'll give you a taste. If you haven't been to the Mississippi Gulf Coast lately, you really need to come down and see the wonderful sights and take a shrimping tour. It's inexpensive, and it's a ton of fun, huh? Oh, and I yeah. mean, I know you've been out there. You were saying right before we broke, now listen, what I'm going to do is take these cakes and put them in this warm pan, all mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But talk a little bit, because I think, Mike, you actually did his logo? Yeah, I did his logo for, for uh, his new, you know, he's also got a couple charter fishing boats on his little fleet. And one of them's a Nyla Murata in the Keys, you know. Oh, really? But uh, he's got quite a little operation there, and his and his beautiful wife is with him, and they just they just have a great little thing going on. And that yeah. Biloxi Shrimping Tour really educates people on the Mississippi Gulf Coast and what we have to offer, and the seafood coming out of the Gulf. And I know, isn't you know, it cool? Yeah. Because you know what? If you're not from here, you really don't know. Yeah. You know, yeah. you really don't. We have such great resources. We have probably the best seafood, in my opinion, anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. we really do, mm -hmm. naturally, just from here. Mm -hmm. You know, Seats. so really makes it kind of an easy, fun, natural trick. Okay, so what we're going to go on this is kind of carefully take those and just turn them. We're going to let them brown a little bit more on each side. Mm -hmm. And while those are cooking, and I may have you kind of keep an eye, just kind of mm -hmm. moving it a little bit. I don't even think we're going to need to. Right. I'm going to make this Sharon yogurt sauce. And I know you were like wincing at the idea. Greek non-fat yogurt. Okay. Well, I, I love to cook, Rob, and I think the kitchen's just as creative an environment as my studio. Absolutely. So I'm very intrigued right. at learning, and, and, and I've and never I, done anything I bet you yogurt. Amber would love this, too. <laughs> a little right? different. All yeah. right, so I put in there some fresh tarragon, mm. some white pepper, some black pepper, okay, little bit of garlic powder, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. and then a little bit of our pure tomato paste, and I'm going to mix all that up. And I tell you what, again, you know, I keep harping on it, nobody's going to remember all these, but if you go straight to the website at mpbonline.org mm -hmm. slash fit to eat, mm -hmm. or go to the Facebook page of MPB and fit to eat, you got it. And so, so now, with the with the yogurt, it makes it fat free. Absolutely. Oh, right on. Absolutely, absolutely. Instead of it being loaded with mayonnaise, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, big difference now. Sharon, a yeah, Sharon. A Sharon is really Chiron. typically like a light tomato hollandaise. I just huh. this is kind of like a pseudo, you know, a pseudo version. Hmm. And look, they're browning beautifully. Mm -hmm. One more little flip, and these guys are done. And I put them on the side. You see, you can kind of mold them right back in. So is a shura, is that like an aioli? It is. It is. It's mm -hmm. similar to an aioli. And if you Just make it with mayonnaise, though, the problem is it's loaded with fat. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's really just a delicious kind of blend. Mm -hmm. And the more it sits, the better it gets. Huh. You know, because the tarragon will kind of blend into it. Mm -hmm. So let's take these cakes. They're definitely done. Put them right on the front. Oh wow! Doesn't that Isn't look it crazy? Cool? All right. <laughs> And then we take a little bit of that Sharon. And you know what? Let's do it a little better. Try a little taste. You'll see. Be brave. <laughs> it's really got a lot of flavor. Oh, wow. I put a little dollop mm. on each cake. Mm. And then I leave plenty on the side. So that way there's plenty that you can dip it in if you'd like. Mm. And those fresh herbs in there. Really. Oh, don't they make it? Mm hmm You know, we can sit this right kind of in front, turn that dish around a little bit, and you got a beautiful, fresh, some of that fresh thyme that went in there. That's a piece of art right there. In that? In that? <laughs> I, I like job. that, man. I like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, looking at the nutritional values of a single serving, you can see that it's under 400 calories. It's low in carbs. It's got lots of protein. But more importantly, it's, it's Mississippi. It's our seafood, man. So 
I've got to say, man, I want to thank you. Marty, Oh, thank, thank you. you so much for, for coming in, man. Such a pleasure. It. And it's such a pleasure to have somebody that absolutely loves seafood. Okay, one thing, though. I'm throwing down the gauntlet. All right. Uh -oh. My mom has a, 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 a crawfish bisque. I'm, I'm challenging you to do a fat-free crawfish bass, mammoose next year, crawfish bass. Next season, you gotta yeah. come back. Right. You gotta come back. <laughs> That's the deal. All right. All right, well listen, I'm your host, Rob Stinson, and until next time, eat well.